Have you ever wondered how much stuff you can buy if you spent $2,000 at Sephora? Today I'm going to show you all the products that I bought as well as a little review as I have been using them for almost a year now. So keep watching and please subscribe and like and comment on this video. So to clarify, this was not all bought in one single Sephora shopping madness spree. <laughs> it was split over three, <laughs> which makes it feel slightly better. Okay, let's jump straight into it and start with these scrunchies. Oh my god. Who else walks down the aisle at Sephora and just adds on at the end? They make you feel like a rat in a maze and they make you go this way and look through all the little products that you just have to add on at the last minute. And what do I do? I put in these scrunchies. Now my total was pretty high anyway, so I didn't really notice the difference, but when I looked at the receipt, $45, $45 for US dollars for three scrunchies. <laughs> Don't worry, the rest of the video isn't like, oh my god, look, Evelina got fucking ripped off. I'll show you some really cool stuff, but I wanted to start with this because it pays to look at the prices. Although, in the little add-on section though, I couldn't find any prices and that's where I went wrong. So $45, boom, on these. They are lovely. So Slip is the brand and I've been wearing these at night so I'll just kind of loosely tie up my hair to kind of stop it from tangling in a big unruly mess. And these have been really nice. They're really soft. Are they worth $45? Absolutely not. Another thing I may not have purchased, if I knew the fucking price, <laughs> was this Huda Beauty Electric Obsessions. This teeny tiny little palette and due to the size I was thinking it was going to be like a sample or something but no it's a fully blown palette and the colors are lovely and vibrant but yeah 45 <laughs> oh my god anyway I have been enjoying using that so I guess it's kind of worth it I haven't used it too much but I really am in love with the hot pink like a true hot pink there's kind of two in here the true hot pink to me is that one it's almost bordering on being it's really hot, vibrant pink, and sometimes they're really hard to find. And the other one's more kind of got a purpley, bluey tone to it. Okay, next up we have an essential detangling brushes. I've heard a lot about these, but I'm like, what is all the fuss about? And when I looked at that tangle teaser, my first reaction was, where the fuck is the handle? Like this. I don't, how do I use this? They had different sizes because I guess people's hands are bigger small. My hand's small but I, I got the larger size. And holy shit, do I prefer it? Yes! Am I open to new things? Apparently not. But I bought this and I've been really happy with it. I previously had the Angel Detangle brush I tried to put a link up. That is like a more traditional brush that you hold. It's metallic purple, that's why I bought it. And the bristles have kind of sunk into the head of the brush. So you can't reach the bristles anymore because they've gone inside the brush. So the first thing I looked at this is if it has solid base. And girls with long hair, you guys know what I'm talking about. This does have one, so I think it was like 30 years. But I've been using this for about six months and I absolutely love it. And it does this crazy thing where you've got frizz and then you go through it and then um, de-electrifies it or whatever. Crazy space age shit. It just looks like plastic to me, apparently. Something special about it, so that is called the Tangle Teaser Professional Detangling Hairbrush Wet and Dry. I haven't tried it wet because I'm worried about like my hair stretching and breaking. It's a bit unruly. <laughs> and these come in so many different colors. Honestly, I got hot pink because I'm sick of not being able to find anything. Yes, I'm goth, everything's black, I get it. But <laughs> sometimes you can't find things that you want. So I went with hot pink for that reason. And if you are also gothically inclined, I recommend that you do the same thing. You don't drive yourself nuts looking for it. This drawer is stupidly big. It's the only one, it's more like a cigar. It's the only one that I could find. I don't know why we have such jumbo straws. I like to drink my tea with straws when I'm filming. Moving straight on to the next item, it's probably the best thing I've ever invested in. And you're like, what is it? A real beauty blender. Now I've bought a few of these, eBay, AliExpress for like a dollar. <laughs> And they're fine. If you've never tried a 20 or $30 beauty blender, you would not know the difference. But let me tell you something. There is a huge difference. Like huge, 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 huge. I couldn't believe it myself either because they look the same, but there's a, such a difference in the density. So this one is squishy, it's so soft. And it absorbs water. Where this one's like a hard ball of foam and when you wash it, it really doesn't absorb the water. I remember thinking when I first learned that you're supposed to wet this little guy, then I'm like, why? The water just runs off. It doesn't get it's fucking stupid. <laughs> if you're also stupid like me, go and buy yourself a real one. It's so soft. 
Look, I can squish that down and this one I struggled to do that. Like, big difference and in terms of application, not just the, you know, the, <laughs> the squishing properties, it puts on the makeup so much better. I guess it's due to the moisture. So yeah, buy a proper one. I also got those tiny little ones which I can't find. I think they're more for putting like concealer and um, setting around the eyes. I use them occasionally but I've been fine with the standard one if you're wondering what size to buy. Okay, I bought a lot of lipsticks and I've got good news, I've got bad news, Sephora collection, what the fuck? You may have noticed my new video that's gone up which is like a six hour lipstick wear test, liquid lipsticks. And so far I've filmed three, there's only one up on my channel. By the time you watch this video, the second, possibly the third one will be online. I'm gonna tell you guys the truth, I'm trying out all the brands, all the liquid lipstick brands and letting you know what I think and I will let you know what I think about this little baby. I'm sure you can kind of hear in my tone. It's a lip stain, they don't call it like long wearing, I don't know what the hell they call it. But I basically had it on before I filmed this video. Two minutes later, I was doing that thing I hate where it flaked off onto my lips, onto my tongue, onto my teeth. And then I had to redo my lips with my favorite red lime, la, 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 lime crime red velvet lipstick. So happy days, not so happy days if I'm wearing that. I did buy two or three of these. What I don't like about the packaging is I cannot see the number of the shade. They don't, they name their shades. I know I bought Desert Sky and I bought two others, but I don't know if I'm just blind. There's like a number on there, 94, but I, I want to see in big letters what this is called if I want to buy it again. I adore this color. I adore a lot of the colors in their range, but unless I find out a way to wear it without flaking, perhaps it's in regards to how many coats I'm putting on. Maybe you're only supposed to put on one instead of two, so I will film a video on that. Let's continue with lip scene. I've got this one in my hand. So this is a Kat Von D Everlasting in the shade Damned. Now I think I wore this once or twice and it came off a lot. And I'm like, but it's called Everlasting. <laughs> not, not lasting too long. <laughs> Again, I haven't given it a decent try, so I will also do a video on this one in the coming weeks. But I bought this a year ago and I haven't been in a rush to wear it again since. Next up is this one. I hope I'm saying this right, Ciate. That's how it reads. It's got the little dash on the E. Anyway, it is called Glitter Flip. Now, I bought this because the color. My best friend had this gorgeous, kind of maroon color on and I was like I want to wear your lips and this was pretty much identical so I was pretty happy that I found one but it also does this thing where you, you put your lips together and then it goes all glittery and apparently it was like a big thing honestly I put it on and I did the lip thing and I couldn't see that much of a difference like maybe there's something wrong with my eyes but it wasn't like mind-blowing in regards to formula it's good and I'll definitely have to do a six hour test with this one and let you know how it wears I seem to have started with the ones that I haven't used that much. That's probably the wrong thing to do. <laughs> Kat Von D translucent powder. Do I like it? Yes, I do. Am I wearing it today? I sure am. I really like this. What I don't like is how hard it is to get out a decent amount of powder to be able to then use it. I feel like I would be better off with a translucent pressed powder. Does it even exist? Does, does, let me know. Please let me know because I don't like the loose powder. It's messy, but I'm making do. So what I've been doing. See? Something I don't like just about the presentation of this product is because it doesn't have that little film or insert that sits above the powder. It just comes out and it's messy and it goes everywhere. Anyway, once I finish putting on uh, concealer and foundation, I will dip it in. I, I will just go to town. I'm gonna go nuts and I dip it in there and then I will set under my eyes and I set my whole face. I know a brush would be quicker but I tend to put on a lot. I like to make sure I'm completely mattified. So that's what I've been using. Beauty Blender, straight into that. And I've been really happy with this. Ugh, ah. oh, but see, that happens every time. Ugh. It's so messy and then I have to clean the top of my vanity. I don't like products that make me clean. Now I have very fond memories of my trips to Hollywood Sephora and that's for a few reasons. One was that I was with my best friend Lisa and it's always fun shopping with your bestie. The second is I was with my half soon and we have the same Sephora addiction and it was so lovely to just have her tell me all the things that I needed to buy and she was she was a bad influence because I'd be like, hey, do I need this? Oh yeah, that's great. And then I'd be like, what? that's definitely need that. <laughs> Our baskets were full. I had one in each arm at some point. But what made the trip even more pleasant was the lovely shop assistant. I can't remember his name, but if you're watching, he said he would subscribe to my channel and he was just lovely. He loved his job and it really came through. I applaud Sephora for hiring such well-educated staff. It's really, really good. So I literally went in, this is probably the third <laughs> time I was in there. He's like, back again? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> here I am. And I'm like, look, I don't do much with my skin. He's like, oh my God, girl. <laughs> I'm like, I know, I know, I know. He 
he's like, you need something. I'm like, I know I need something, but, and he's like, what? I'm like, I want it to smell really good. I'm like, it would be great if it had like good properties and all that shit, but mainly I want it to smell nice. I love my creams and I will show you some of my perfumes to smell beautiful. It's kind of like a before bed ritual for me. I'll open them up and I will put something on my face that just smells delicious. <laughs> and we walked around the entire Sephora shop and he was putting all kinds of little bottles in front of my face and I'm not, oh that's disgusting, he's like yeah that's terrible. And we did this honestly for about half an hour and then we found Ollie Henriksen and I fell in love with the smell. It's so fresh and zingy and citric and kind of sugary. It makes me hungry. It does, it does, it does. But the smell, oh my god, I've been using this since April last year. So almost a year, this is my third tub. He listened to what I wanted in a skincare product and we literally went around sniffing every product until he went, oh shit, I should have thought of this one first. And I was like, bingo! So let me tell you about the, the collection that I bought. For some stupid reason, it was cheaper to buy this box set, only available in America, of three items rather than just the moisturizer. So what did I do? <laughs> I bought one and then I went back and bought like four more. <laughs> I did try it though. I bought one, I went home, I used it that night. I fell in love with the smell. My skin felt so soft. Let's talk about that. It felt really soft. And then I went back and bought like three or maybe four. I should have bought more. I should have bought more because now I'm running out. I'm like, fuck, why didn't I? Anyway, I'm using obviously the pink one. They have orange ones and I think they have yellow that smells like banana. I don't have oily skin, I don't have dry skin, but I do like a moisturizer that's not water-based. Oh, I'll show you. A moisturizer that I did buy that's more watery. That smells like watermelon. But this one, I think would be for normal skin. Highly, highly recommend it. And ladies, yeah, you do need to look up to your skin because you know what? We're filming on 4K now and I can't hide anything. You know, I'm, I'm putting all this out there to you. So I've got to look after my skin. So yeah, big congratulations to my channel for getting to 4K. <laughs> I didn't go to 2K, I just jumped straight from HD, 4K, so hopefully there is a big difference in this video. So if you buy the introduction type box by Ollie Henriksen, I hope I'm saying that right, you will get this double cleanser. I really enjoy this, it smells like roses, it's creamy. I would use it after my uh, makeup removal, which is Clinique, which is another thing I bought some from Sephora. So because I use so much heavy makeup, I'm using an oil-based makeup remover to take my makeup off. I will talk about that in a second. And then I find I use this. And I, I still need to do something after that, but it really does lift any excess foundation um, around the face, the creases of the nose that the makeup remover may have missed. I really like the texture of this. And again, the smell is divine. What also came in that box was a detox mask. I haven't used this too much. I think I don't have the patience for masks. Because you have to wait like so damn long for them to dry and I'm like, I need to go to bed! So I haven't used this too much. Comment below if you have and you like it, maybe I should. I don't really get the point of it, they're supposed to suck out the toxins or something, but I'm like, who has time? <laughs> okay, the thing that smells like banana is the banana bright eye cream. Have I noticed a massive difference? No. Am I going to continue using it? Yes. And that one's nearly empty. So it is now March. I bought this last April. So one little bottle. You think, gee, that's tiny, but you only need the tiniest bit for under your eyes. The last thing I bought is this Truth Serum. I really like that in the middle of the day. Sometimes I'm just feeling a little dry and I just put that on and I put it all over my face and it goes on like a really nice moisturizer, but it dries really quickly. So if you're looking for a new skincare range, I highly recommend this brand. And this has a lot of vitamin C in it, which is great for your skin. Treat yourself. And if you're in America, buy that box and try out these things. So lovely. If you can get into a Sephora shop and actually <laughs> and actually smell them. Choose them based on which smell you prefer, which is what I did. It just <laughs> so happened to be that the one that I liked the smell of was my skin type. Because I didn't like the other ones. I didn't I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> to continue with moisturizers, I also bought Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Pink moisturizer. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Like focusing the bow is quite nice. My bestie fell in love with this and I was going to buy it for her, but then I ended up buying her lipstick instead. I'm like, are you sure? This is really nice. So this smells delicious. <laughs> Another reason why I purchased it. I like the bottle. It's not for people with dry skin at all. It is very water-based. You put it on, it's gone straight away. Sometimes I'm like, did that do anything? 
do it, do it, let's do it a second time. Sometimes I'll put the Ollie Henriks and stuff on, I'll you know, watch a movie in bed or whatever and I'll put that on. Kind of change things up a little, I don't know, I just avoid it. And I like it. If you have normal skin, try that one out, you might really like it. Okay, let's move on to Tarte. I could have bought a lot of their products. Because their brushes are so damn cute, but I bought this, which is an exfoliator. It is called Friction Stick. And yeah, the packaging just caught my attention. I've never seen like a wind up exfoliator before, and it's black. Look at that. Pretty cool. So I take that into the shower once or twice a week, you know, put it all over my face. And it does a really good job. I like quite abrasive exfoliators, and I wouldn't say it's super fine. For some people with sensitive skin, you might find this too full on. It's a very fine granule, but it does seem to do the job. It does definitely exfoliate, so I would recommend it. But I do have one by Clinique that is an apricot based scrub and it has these big seeds in it and it's more like full on and you're like, come on, I gotta scrape the skin away. <laughs> one step away from an acid peel, that's what I use. All right, so we just kind of spoke about acid peels in just never had one, don't really want to have one. This is one of the first items from Target. I kind of had a little trouble remembering what was from Sephora and what wasn't, so I'm just going to include a few of these here. There's not many at all, so don't worry. So Pixie Skin Treats Glow Tonic. It is 5% glycolic acid. Yeah, my skin went bright red when I put this on. It's, apparently it's supposed to do that. I haven't used it too much because, you know, they say only use it once a week, it's still full. Yeah, weird kind of burning sensation. Apparently it's all normal. Honestly, I didn't really see a difference. I don't know if I'm missing the point of this product. Comment below if you know what it's supposed to do. But I haven't been that impressed with that one. Continuing in the vein of skincare, we have this Lancome Tonic. I, again, bought it for the smell. It is delicious. It is so creamy as well. Mmm, I just love it. So you put that on a little beauty pad and I will use this to clean off dirt on my face before bed. If I don't have makeup on, this is what I will use before I put moisturizer on. If I do have makeup, I would start with my Clinique, take the day off and then I would do the Oli Hendrickson cleanser. And then I would do this and then I would moisturize <laughs> in that order. I bought three of these because, oh, so expensive in Australia and again, just fell in love. I remember my best friend going, do you really need three? I'm like, I know, do I need four? She's, <laughs> she's like, one is fine. I'm like, no, are you crazy, bitch? Anyway, really recommend that. I don't think it was terribly pricey either. I know that brand has a lot of really high-end serum and stuff like that, but this was quite reasonable. So that kind of finishes off all the skincare that I bought. So if you wear a lot of heavy makeup, a lot of eyeliner, a lot of waterproof mascara, you need a good makeup remover. If you're trying to use a non-oil based one, you're, just, you're going to be rubbing the fuck out of your eyes and it's going to take too long. I don't have time for that. I use this. It works every time. It is terrific. I've probably used this one since I was 16. Uh, so this is the biggest bottle they have. I actually don't like the pump. I prefer the little smaller bottle that you can just pour on because I don't know, like it's such a surprise, you don't know where it's going to end up. You, you press the pump and it goes everywhere. Age old story, right? Anyway, yeah, it's a bit unpredictable. I'm going to go to, back to the smaller bottle when this runs out, but it never fails me. It takes the makeup off and I'm not rubbing, it just slides off. So try that if you haven't already. Back to another Target one. This is a Pixi Nourishing Lip Polish. Now it has little granules in it, so it's kind of like an exfoliator for the lips, I guess. Um, and it's got this little, can you see that, like a curved applicator in which you would put it on with so you just squeeze it out like a lip gloss, put it on. I haven't used that too much, although I do like the little points that are on the brush um, and I just go over them with my lips sometimes. I forget that I have this, that's actually why I don't use it. Next up is this Urban Decay Complexion Primer. I know that this was purchased from the Urban Decay store in Santa Ana where we were staying and I have fallen in love with this. I was previously using Elamascus primer and it was recommended to me by Riri Phillips. I used it based upon that recommendation but it kind of went on similar to the watermelon moisturizer that I mentioned. It was very watery and I put it on and I kind of felt like it wasn't doing anything. I'm like, is that, is that the point? Is that... <laughs> I don't know. It just I would then put on my foundation and feel like nothing was there. So this is very different. She said it would fill the pores, it would smoothen out your skin and it is very soft. It's like, it feels like pearls on your face. So you can see that's 
That's half full. I bought that nearly a year ago and I'm still using it. I only need one pump and I can see and I can feel what it does to the pores in my nose, under my eyes, around my chin. And I've been absolutely loving this. So if you haven't tried it, give that a try and you will see a really big difference. Something else I didn't purchase from the Urban Decay store but I have been using for quite a while is the All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray. Now this is good because I didn't have anything to compare it to. But recently I purchased Slay All Day, don't you love that name? <laughs> Setting Spray by Gerard Cosmetics. And do I prefer it? Absolutely. Is it just because it smells nice? A little bit. But it appears to work better as well. <laughs> That's important. Now I bought the coconut one. Oh, I just spray it all over my face and it smells delicious. If you like your senses to get a little tingle when you're applying your makeup or face care products, go with this one. And they have so many different scents. Go and check it out. Something I also purchased when at Urban Decay was this Troublemaker Mascara. The packaging caught my eye. I mean, it's like holographic. Let's go with holographic. Anyway, was I that impressed with it? No. Will I give it another try at some point? <laughs> Let's talk about the one I was really excited about and back to being from Sephora. This is by Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. Is that a great name? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't hold true. Not really, but it's really really good. I used it today and I got really great separation on my lower lashes and I have falsies on But I did apply it before applying my false lashes. Trying to focus. Can you see the separation in my lower lashes? Maybe, maybe not. Let's see how the focusing on my new camera goes. Oh god. Highly recommend this mascara if you haven't tried it yet. One more thing I bought from Urban Decay was the eyeshadow primer potion but the anti-aging one. I've just had the, the normal one, I didn't even know that there was another one. I haven't actually used this yet. I haven't been using eyeshadow primer for a while. You're like, what? Yeah, I've been using my concealer and setting it and then going in and that's fine. I mean, unless I want a dramatically bold color, I might use the white one that I've got by NYX, the white eyeshadow base. But yeah, this baby hasn't even been opened, so I'll try it at some point. Okay, let's get on to some Kat Von D products. What did I buy? I bought the Lash Lino. There's a bit of controversy about this product. I mean, it's it's marketed as the first waterline in our eyeliner product, yet Kat Von D yourself said it wasn't supposed to go directly on the waterline, but just on the edge where your lashes start. I'm like, oh, that's kind of confusing. <laughs> Which is it? Anyway, I bought this in Hollywood really really excited to use it it did sting my eyes a lot of people have said that it doesn't it did and again the people that said oh it shouldn't have stung have said well you've got to put it away from your waterline and i'm like but it's called it's called an inner inner lash line waterline the first waterline liner anyway bit of confusion there so i got some tips from some other people i ended up taking it back i got my money back because i'm like i'm not happy with this product I put it on and just like a normal pencil that you would put into your waterline, it just it went to this corner of my eyes and I made a big ugly mess. So I took it back and I said, I'm not happy with this and she kind of asked me why and I, I told her, I said, it doesn't, it doesn't work. And she gave me a few tips and got me thinking and then I bought it again. I bought it again in Australia and I'm like, I like a lot of the Kat Von D products, I'm going to give it a second try. So I might do a video on this because this is going to be make or break for this product. And I know a lot of you would like to hear the truth about it. Does it work? Does it sting? Does it stay where it's supposed to? What happens to your face after you've been wearing it for a long time? So let me know in the comments below if you would like me to do that. I'm completely undecided at this point. <laughs> Something I have been liking is the Locket Concealer. I bought the shade L1 Neutral. I think that might be the lightest one. I think it's one shade too light for me. But fuck it, I bought it. So I'm going to use it. Regardless of if I look like a ghost or not. <laughs> um, so I put it under the eyes, a little bit on my nose. Um, on my cupid's bow, on my chin, anywhere that I want to bring forward and I've been blending it in with my aforementioned legit beauty blender or oh, alliteration and then setting it with the Kat Von D translucent powder and that's been going really well. Would I buy it again? Yes, probably. Really enjoying that. What I'm a bit at odds about is the Locket Foundation which I also bought overseas. I went with Light 42 Neutral so I probably should have put that in hindsight. 42 as well. Anyway, does, do people say buy the concealer? Why don't you buy the <sighs> I look bright as fuck and that's all that matters. What I don't like is this stupidly designed little thing. It's hard to get in and if you wear nails, you feel me, right? I can't, 
I can't get that back in and it's so stupid. Do we need that? Can I just throw it out? Because I want to. I hate that. The other thing is the formula. Like, I've been using it because I bought it and I don't like to be wasteful. So I will kind of see a foundation through to the end. Whether we're having a happy relationship or not, I will just continue using it because that's what I do. But I was recently given this one, Rimmel Lasting Finish 25 Hours Nude. It has SPF in it as well, which is a um, little added bonus, you know, over here. Boiling away in Australia, and do I prefer it? One zillion percent. I can't remember why <laughs> right now, but I know when I used this the day before and then I changed to this, I was like, mind alone such a difference so if you're liking this one give this one a try this is by Rimmel medium coverage it could be I don't know if this one's a full coverage full coverage it could be that it could be like this is too full on for me it doesn't make it a bad foundation it could just be not what I prefer I mean my skin is pretty full on with <laughs> no I mean that in the most down to earth way as possible I mean I'm lucky I don't have acne scars I don't really get pimples that much when I do they're really big and nasty but I don't feel like I need a huge full coverage makeup, so now that I've figured out that there's a difference, it's probably why I prefer this one. It would be really cool if the Kat Von D to come out with a medium, like, half coverage uh, foundation at some point. Hopefully that is in the works. Ooh, here's another face care product. So this was from Target, um, continuing with the Pixie products I have. Vitamin Wake Up Mist. Do I love this? Absolutely. I just spray this shit all over my face. If I'm getting, like, if I'm having a moment, I will just walk into my bathroom. Spray, 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 and then I feel a little better. It is orange scented, it's zesty, it's uplifting. On some days that have been just unbearably hot in Australia, that, that is really cool. Though. So you can see, I've been going nuts with that, and it's not even half empty since the last April. Highly recommend that. Oh my god, there's so much stuff. Continuing with smells, I treated myself to my first Chanel perfume, Mademoiselle. Mmm, it's sensual, it's a little spicy, I wouldn't say it's fruity, it's it's dark and mysterious and that's what I like in my perfumes. The male um, perfume expert, I love that Sephora hires so many males, it's fantastic. Normally like when you go into MAC it's always female, 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 female. It's wonderful to see possibly domination by the opposite sex, like they're into makeup too, you know, that's great. So the guy that helped me out with the perfume, he knew the nitty gritty of the scents, like what was in them, what made the smell, and he just asked me, he said, legit, what do you like? I'm like dark, mysterious, not sweet, not floral, sexy, long lasting, I said, okay, okay, and then he got like four or five, I'm like, nope, nope, ooh. And I told him I liked black opium, that's one of my favorite scents that Vaughn bought me on a whim just from seeing the dark marketing and <laughs> it turned out I also fell in love with that and this was similar but very very different so I bought that it was like what 120 US it wasn't cheap but a really good high quality perfume will last you a long time and it lingers when you wear it which I really like speaking of lingering this is not from Target or Sephora I had to throw it in because it's so lovely rose jam this is from Lush I assume this is sold in Australia as well. This was bought in America. I was seeing my friend Nadia a lot. We went to Beetle House for dinner together with our partners and she just smelled delicious constantly. I'm like, what are you wearing? And it turns out it was this little spray. I mean, it looks like it's got insecticide in it. <laughs> I'm gonna go out and like spray the weeds. So I don't know what they're thinking with the packaging. It's not very sexy. A sweet, fruity, rose and vanilla scented mist that'll leave you with a trail of admirers. So there I've gone and contradicted myself. You know, this, this happens a lot actually. I must like sweet because all the scents that I end up liking, they're like, you know that's sweet. I'm like, damn. I don't like candy sweet though, not like the Britney Spears cheap. Ugh. So this is full on. This is very strong. One spray and I'm smelling it all day. It is absolutely crazy. And the same can be said for this one that I also bought from Lush. They haven't even stuck the stickers on straight. <laughs> it's very minimalistic and it's called Gorilla Perfume. I don't know what that means. Uh, anyway, I smelled this on my half soon. Beautiful flow. She would just, she would smell like jasmine and I love that. It reminds me of the town that I used to live in. The jasmine would flower every spring as we would walk to our music school. And yeah, I've just got fond memories of that. And I was like, what are you wearing? And again, it really lingered. It was expensive, but very high quality. If you haven't checked out their products, go and give them a smell. They're some of my favorites. I've been using them a lot. Sometimes I use them too much. 
It's funny, I wore the jasmine one and one day Von's like, oh, you smell delicious, that's lovely. And then I put it on like a week later and he's like, whoa, what perfume is that? I'm like, it's the same one you complimented me. <laughs> I don't get it. Um, and still really seems to like the rose jam one. I put it on, he's like, mom, you smell like a bunch of flowers. <laughs> so cute, I wanna die. Okay, so next, we kind of went away from Kat Von D for a second, but we're coming back. Metal Crush 10 year anniversary extreme highlighter. Woo, I haven't actually tried this yet. I've been really happy with my Jeffree Star ice cold highlighter that I've been using. I have it on today. I have it on my brow bone. I have it on the inner corner of my eyes, a little bit on the nose, Cupid's bow, a little bit on the chin. Not everywhere. <laughs> Strategically placed, but yeah, in a lot of places. I don't know how I'm going to go with this because yeah, it is like more yellowy. I'm not even sure if it's going to suit my skin, but I thought, hey, fuck it. I'm gonna try that. This little bad boy was something that I picked up on the way out. Those damn add-ons at the last minute that get you every time. So this is Huda Beauty again, matte and strobe mini lip set. $45, again, I bought three things that were like $45 or ah! When I first put this on, it tingled. Can someone write in a comment if it's supposed to tingle? Like, does it have a plumping effect? If it does, they don't really mention it on here. Anyway, I have absolutely fallen in love with the shades. I've fallen in love with the formula. You will definitely be seeing this one, which is called Medusa. I love that on my channel very soon. I'm going to do a six hour test with it. And I think it's going to go really well. I haven't played around too much with the metallic lip glosses that came with it, but I probably should. So far, very impressed with that. Man, it's literally like I had no makeup and I had to buy everything, which <laughs> completely isn't the case, but it seems that way. Continuing with Huda Beauty, I bought the Rose Gold Palette Remastered. Do I love it? Abso-frickin-lutely. I love the formulas. They're so creamy. And the colors are magnificent. I love that burnt kind of red. Where are we there? Love that. It's got, it has mattes, it has metallics, it has light shades. Not light enough to highlight with, I found, but you know, I've got... <laughs> Like six highlighters, so who cares? This was sold out the first time I went to LA. Luckily, the second time I was there in October, it was in stock and I grabbed that and I've been loving it ever since. Same thing with this palette from Violet Boss. So it's called the Rainbow Eyeshadow Palette. And a lot of people recently asked me on Instagram, go and follow me if you don't. I've been a very busy little bee on there. So a lot of people asked me recently in a makeup look, where did you get that purple from? And it was from this palette. And what I love about this palette is it has two purples, two really nice purples. One is more of a two-tone kind of purpley blue metallic and the other one is still metallic but it's just a true purple. It is really nice. I actually fell in love with this really vibrant color but I just, as you can see, the tin it has no brush marks at all. So I haven't found the balls yet to actually use that one but I hopefully will soon such a pretty color and that was only like $30 where the Huda Beauty one would have easily been 50 or 60 or 70 so big price difference there. The other palette I was very excited to pick up was the Kat Von D Saint and Sinner palette and I have been using this a lot. Some of the colors will take me out of my comfort zone but I, oh, I need to do that. I kind of like that about this palette. Firstly, let's talk about how it looks. It's gorgeous. But there's just some really unique colors in there and it's got me thinking that I always go in for the same shades, you know, deep purples, deep reds, blacks, electric blue. I need to change things up a little bit. So I've got to give that a, a better try. Do I love the formula of the eyeshadow? Yes. I do prefer Lime Crime though, possibly even over Huda Beauty. I have the Lime Crime Venus palette and I absolutely adore it. And I have been thinking about getting the Lime Crime XL palette. I've seen that out and about and it looks absolutely stunning. And I'm also really excited to try anything from Jeffree Star. I want ideally the Blood Sugar palette, but that's been sold out for quite some time. I haven't yet got my hands on it. So please comment down below which you think I should try first if you have happened to try both. This beauty blender was actually from Target. It is the brand RT. And you know why I bought this? For the travel case. I'm like, that is so smart. You know, you don't just want to put it inside your makeup case and get it filthy from the eyeliners that accidentally open. I don't love the sponge as much as I do the beauty blender, but I bought it for the case. It was like 12 bucks from Target, I think. So go and check that out. Next thing that completely blew my mind and kind of made me think, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. <laughs> like this exists? Holy crap. Was this duo eyelash glue. I wear falsies all the time and I've always struggled. 
I've got the clear one, the white one that dries clear. I recently bought the black one, but I found the formula was so runny. <laughs> you remember that video where I spurted myself everywhere? I'll try to find it and insert it in this video because it's funny. It's like, ah! <laughs> Anyway, I found that too runny and I didn't like it. I went back to the white one. I always had trouble with having to use the little dish that the eyelashes come in and pour out a little bit and then, you know, get a cotton bud and then apply it. I'm like, oh, this is just, life is too short. Hurry the fuck up. And then I found this. I think it was at Target. And I'm like, they make it in a little application, like, brush. I'm like, get out of the sea. That is exactly what I need. And look, it's half empty already. So if you don't know that that exists, go and look. I think that was from Target. I'm sure you can get it online, eBay if you're international. Mind blown. So much easier for applying pulse lashes. So when I'm not doing my makeup for you guys or Instagram or the other things that I do, my favorite go-to shade would be Rose. This isn't even a quarter of them, but I have a lot of shades in this color and I find I'm attracted to that color and I just keep buying it. Do you guys do that? You probably do. We need to try to stop. <laughs> it's not good. So, I will, ooh, that's nice. Ooh. And I end up with 50 of the same color. So I went into Sephora and I said, I want a liner for these colors that are all the same, different brands, but they're all the same, that I can just make my everyday lip shade kind of pop a little bit more so I just wanted to outline my lips and yes yeah, she went around with me and we found the perfect shade so if you're also into like rosy colors which was by Smashbox always sharp lip liner and every time you put on the lid and then give it a turn to open it sharpens itself um, so that's really handy because as I mentioned a lot I don't have time to waste so I highly recommend that if you're looking for a lip liner oh my god there's so many here these were bought based upon looking at Malhavsoon's gorgeous lips for quite a few days. And I'm like, what are you wearing? And she ended up wearing the NYX Powder Pop. And I've never seen an applicator like this before. Quite cute. So it's got this little spongy, foamy thing at the end. And you squeeze it out and then you put it on your lips. It's not crazy precise because it's like a big ass cotton tip that you're putting on your lips. But they smell delicious. I'm not sure how long wearing they are. If I'm just going to the shops or something like that and I just don't want my lips to be bare and looking like death, I will apply these. My half said she was wearing them to like Disneyland and when we're filming videos. So I don't know if she has some kind of like magic secret trick there to, to make them last a lot longer but um, I found I preferred them in the lighter colors they do come in darker colors but I wouldn't recommend putting it on with like a red or anything like that but for neutrals they seem quite good I also picked this one up Stay Matte Liquid Lip Color by Rimmel again so I have quite a few products by Rimmel this would have been purchased at the American Target I absolutely adore this formula and the color it's a bit more of a poppy pink compared to the other more neutral rosy colors that I've got. One thing I don't like is the smell. It's like they've tried to put a scent to kind of mask the chemical smell, but the chemical smell just wins <laughs> by a lot. So I'm kind of put off when I put that one on my lips because I want to smell nice. The next one that I bought, which these were also from Target and they came in this wonderful little tin. I recently threw it out, but it was this little metal tin and they, they are by Hard Candy Velvet Mousse. They smell delicious. Oh, that's probably the best smelling lipstick that I have at the moment. So Hard Candy Matte Lip Color. I got the shade Spider Orchid and what is this one? Hysteria, which is a really lovely vibrant purple. I will do a video on these on my channel to let you know how they go. I think this one was from Target as well. Mega Last Liquid Catsuit Metallic Lipstick. So this is like a deep rose, but it's very metallic. I haven't had too much luck with metallics. I just found this one the other day because I had to sort through my vanity because I couldn't find anything. So I needed everything up and I went, oh my god, I forgot that I bought this. So yeah, review on my channel coming up. Oh, we only have three things left, guys. This is coming to an end. Not from Target, not from Sephora, not from Urban Decay, but I need to mention this. This is from Bath and Body Works. I don't even think we have this here in Australia. So I bought this. I bought this for the smell. I said, look, I'm going through IVF. I feel yucky. I just want a nice body moisturizer so my husband can give me a massage or something. Massage my feet. And we went with this one, vanilla and patchouli. I'm not even sure how to say that, but goddamn. Probably the nicest vanilla and that other thing. I don't. What is it? A flower? Oh, fucking love that smell. So if you're if you have a chance to go into a Bath and Body Works, go and check that out because it is the most beautiful smelling moisturizer I have ever come across. I love the old-fashioned glass bottles as well. 
It would seem that my addiction for things that smell nice has been going on for quite a while. One might say even longer than a decade because I loved this when I was 16 and now I still love it. So this is the Kerastase Nutri Thermique. I don't know, it's got carotene in it. Ugh, got a bit too close there. <laughs> I love how that smells. I love how it makes my hair feel too. Very silky and easy to brush afterwards. Once a week after my shampoo, I will put that in and replace of conditioner and just leave it in for a good five minutes while I'm doing other stuff in the shower. Just usually wasting water and <laughs> enjoying life. And then, yeah, wash it out. This one, Diva Curl Melt Into Moisture. I believe that was from Target. Am I impressed? Not really. Matcha butter conditioning mask. I bought it for the smell, but now I'm, I don't know. It smells better in America. Maybe, maybe the Australian air did something to it. I'm not that fussed about it. Diva Curl. Yeah, would I recommend that? Not really. Even how it felt on my hair, I was like, meh. I don't want meh. I want mind blown, especially when you spend that much. Okay, well, I think that's about everything. I really enjoyed buying the products. I enjoyed the people that I was with when I was buying the products. Fond memories. I love the staff at Sephora. They were so helpful. And I've definitely fallen in love with a lot of the products that I've just shown you. Some of my favorites are definitely the skincare range that I'm now using by Ollie Henriksen. So check that out if you haven't. I really, really urge you to do so. Your skin will thank you. Is it normal to buy as much as I bought? Can you make me feel better and comment below and let me know? Did you enjoy this video? It took me a good year to do it, but at the same time that gave me a while to use most of the products, not all of the products. A big part of this video is giving you my honest opinions on products that I've been using for quite some time now and hopefully to help you out if you're about to go into Sephora and want to buy a bunch of stuff. Just before we go, let's talk about some of my next videos that are coming up on my channel. One of the next ones I'll be doing is a Dolls Kill haul, specifically I would say Current Mood and Widow, two brands that are sold on Dolls Kill, which I've recently fallen in love with, so expect an absolutely epic haul coming to my channel very soon. Another one I'll be filming tomorrow is a Killstar shoe review, specifically on the Callista boot, which I recently got and love! Oh, I can't wait to show you guys them, they are phenomenal shoes. I have a awesome clothing haul coming up for Malefic Apparel. So many wonderful items to show you that has already been filmed, just needs to be edited. And the last one coming up will be a creepy gothic decor haul of some of the items I was sent by Ravenous. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. Don't just press the subscribe button, make sure you click that little bell so you get notified when I upload. And let's try to get this channel like, I want to say pumping. That's not the right word. Let's get this channel pumping. <laughs> If you enjoy my videos, please comment, like, and subscribe. Bye!